What's up, family? Okay, so Britain is now getting in on this North Korea action. Their defense secretary has stated that, hey man, if it come down to it, we ain't afraid to push the big red button on North Korea and drop a nuclear bomb. Goes like this, y'all. Theresa May would fire Britain's first nuclear weapons as a first strike if necessary, the defense secretary has said. Michael Fallon said, the prime minister was prepared to launch Trident in the most extreme circumstances, even if Britain itself was not under nuclear attack. The statement came as the conservatives continued to exploit labor divisions on the retention of the Trident deterrent to warn of the very dangerous chaos if Jeremy Coven becomes prime minister. But he went further, marking out a clear divide between the parties when asked if Miss May was ready to use Trident as a preemptive initial strike. In the most extreme circumstances, we have made it very clear that you can't rule out the use of nuclear weapons as a first strike, Mr. Fallon said. Asked in what circumstances, he replied, they are better not specified or described, which would only give comfort to our enemies and make the deterrent less credible. The whole point about the deterrent is that you have to get a lot of uncertainty in the mind of anyone who might be thinking of using weapons against this country. Mr. Fallon also insisted that critics of Trident, including senior military figures who have ridiculed the idea that it is an ineffective deterrent, were absolutely wrong. It deters day and night, every single day of every single year, the defense secretary insisted. Mr. Corbin sparked fresh labor despair when asked if Trident renewal would be in Labor's manifesto, he replied, we haven't completely worked out the manifesto yet. Last year, the Labor leader had appeared to abandon attempts to persuade his party to back unilateral disarmament after a conference vote in favor of Trident. Mr. Corbyn also refused to say whether he would order the captains of the UK's nuclear submarines to launch their missiles if the government had been wiped out by a nuclear strike. Today, Labor's general election chief, Andrew Gwynn, insisted renewing Trident will not be part of Labor's defense review if it wins the general election. We are committed to renewing the Trident system, said Mr. Gwynn, rejecting Mr. Corbyn's statement that all aspects of defense policy were up for grabs. Now, off the rip, I'm gonna tell you just like this. It's good to see another country besides the US putting some skin in the game. However crazy and absurd it may sound, Britain I seriously doubt we'll strike first under any circumstances, especially using a, um, a nuclear bomb. I doubt seriously that they will try to do something like that. If Britain alone or at the behest of the United States or NATO would initiate a nuclear strike, I think they'd get smashed. I think they would get smashed very, very fast. And I don't think that the U.S. would get there in time to help them. Because, you know, North Korea is just a little bit too close. And China, I do believe that China would back them 100%. Now, the thing about a nuclear bomb is, is that if they drop a bomb, they drop that nuke, it's over. If anybody touch off a nuclear war, it's over. That means for everybody. Ain't going to be no more partying. No more basketball games. All that old NFL season. Oh, the NFL season coming back. The NBA season. Baseball, that's over. Going to the game, that's over. Weddings. 
anniversaries, birthdays, going to pick out gifts and gift wrapping and shopping, all that mall shopping and stuff, that's over. Hitting up the strip clubs, going to the bars, fishing, all that's over. Hell, all the fish going to be dead. I'm telling you, somebody touch off a new, it's over. It's a wrap. Because the whole point of a nuclear bomb is to end it. It's to make everything be over with. Now, now Trident, explain this to y'all. Trident is Britain's uh, nuclear deterrent. It's, uh, it consists of, uh, they have like 16, I mean, they have four submarines. And they have like 16 missiles with, uh, I think it's four, like four uh, nuclear heads on each one of those missiles. And it can do a whole lot of damage. I mean, a whole lot of damage. So when you start talking about Trident, anytime you hear Trident and in terms of war, just know that's something real, real serious. Um, but anybody that's saying Anybody that's in a position of prime minister, anybody in a position of defense secretary, president, any of these people on this type of level, are using words like a nuclear bomb as a, as a preemptive strike, anybody that's in a position like that really do need their head checked. They need to be, they need to be kicked the hell off of whatever perch they're standing on, they're sitting on immediately. They need to go immediately. And their ass need to be exiled. Something, they, damn exiled, executed. I'm telling you. That's the most absurd thing I ever heard. Using a nuke as a preemptive strike. That's stupid. That's downright Asinine. I'm telling you, man. These these countries, it's like they're playing, they act like they're playing a game, you know, of I don't know, like a some type of Mortal Kombat or something. And they think they think it's a game. It's like they're playing around and and, and sooner or later, somebody gonna touch it off. It this ain't gonna just be a whole bunch of talking. Sooner or later, you ever been in a situation where you was about to have a fight or you witnessed a situation where somebody was about to have a fight and they keep on going back and forth. They, they argue. He say this, he say that. Well, yeah, hit me then. Well, hit me then. You ain't going to do shit. I beat your ass. I beat your ass. You ain't going to do a motherfucking thing to me, nigga. You know, you, you, you keep on talking that shit. You know, and it's like, and then, it's like they're going and going and going. They keep on, it's like they're pumping themselves up and they're trying to convince themselves that they really will do something. And at the same time, the, the people around the world are like egging them on, saying, oh, I ain't gonna do nothing. And then other ones say, man, bust that motherfucking head, man. Man, drop that nuke on that fool. Hit that bitch. Man, knock that fool out. You know, that's how the people are. That's, that's how people are around the, around the world. It's like, that's their, that's their uh, sentiments. It's like, they're, they're like responding like that, like, like, like they're egging on these countries. And it's like, I really don't think that people understand, fully understand the ramifications of war, like real war, like war. I ain't talking about where you go in and you just bully somebody and push somebody around. I'm talking about war. I'm talking about where you meet your equal. I'm talking about where you don't feel like there's a chance that you know going in you may not return home or you know that there's a chance that your country too can be obliterated. I'm talking about that. That's the war. I ain't talking about pushing somebody around, bullying somebody, kicking somebody around. You know you can win. You know you're going to go in and win and come home. I'm talking about having that doubt that you might not get back home. Having that doubt that your children might not make it home. Your husband or your wife may not make it home. I'm talking about that. I'm talking about that kind of war. I'm talking about the kind of war when, just like when 
you get into it with somebody in the streets and you know you're dealing with real motherfucking certified gangsters and you know you better you better hide your family you're trying to hide your family you're trying to hide yourself and lay low i'm talking about that lay low walk they don't really want to see that it's like these people playing a real real high stakes game of of chicken and sooner or later somebody gonna get plucked no more talk what, what the haters talking about Texas.